Hi everybody, so it's in my head and if you think about it that we like to build on what went before and if you think about our first attempts at moving something, well it was with wooden versions of this thing, great big rollers. Of course it's not a great big move to go from rollers to these things, wooden wheels, they're just a section of a roller because to make it spin we need this, the axle. The axle is something that we've been left with and built on ever since the development of the roller, or at least that's my contention. The axle is something we hang everything on. We hang on the wheels, we hang the drive, and we rotate that. In vehicles, it's easy to understand why you would do that, but we do exactly the same thing when it comes to electric motors. So that's the axle. Obviously in there is the rotor, which is a great big lump of steel and copper. Then we have the stator, another big lump of steel and copper, also that we can rotate the rotor in the stator. And of course the rotor is where we have the magnetic field and it's arranged like that, well I would say because we're used to arranging things like that. And here's an example, because it needs an axle, because the axle is the thing you drive and the axle drives what you want to drive, like a wheel. And here obviously the pistons driving this axle, that's connected to the gearbox and it drives everything. So in this arrangement, you have to have an axle because you drive an axle. Of course, technology does liberate us, but to a degree, the way we think of things, the legacy that is brought forward can be something of a straitjacket. Because all that makes good engineering sense. If you're gonna drive something, have an axle and you would expect it to be arranged that way. But of course, what happened then was brushless DC motors came along and brushless DC motors originally used the same concepts, but they moved on from there. When you turn on a current in a copper wire, it creates a magnetic field in direction of the current and that causes an armature to rotate. If we then swap that over, the field will swap over and that armature will continue to rotate. And that's the principle of every electric motor. To do that automatically, then we need to use something called brushes. The brushes touch copper rings. That copper ring is the commutator. When the current passes down in one direction, as it does exactly the same thing, it creates a magnetic field, and that pushes against the other two magnets rotating the rotor. Of course, when that happens, the commutator moves as well because it's connected to the rotor, and that acts like a switch, swapping the direction of the field. The same thing happens in a brushless motor. Only in a brushless motor, that switching is taken care of by electronics. The switching, causes the rotation in exactly the same way. So brushed and brushless are the same thing, it's just that brushed uses mechanical switching, brushless uses electrical switching. That tiny difference actually makes a surprisingly big difference. For example, a brushless motor is much more efficient and it can turn at a much higher speed because it doesn't have brushes bouncing around arcing like crazy. But it also means something else. The timing of the switching of the motor is now divorced from the rotation of the stator. The axle doesn't actually need to be there. Because we're now timing it electronically, we don't need a commutator to turn at the same rate as a stator on an axle. And of course this has not escaped people and the advantages of it is if you can get rid of all that gubbins that goes along with an axle, of course you're reducing the weight of the motor dramatically. You reduce the weight, then you increase the power density. That is, for the same weight of motor you can have much more power, or you can have the same power from a motor that is much lighter. And this is leading to some really exciting designs in motorcycles and bicycles and jet thrusters and all kinds of things are now considering a motor without an axle. Of course, this is all very exciting stuff and represents the next leap forward in power dense motors. But as we've been banging on about for ages, generators and motors are two sides of the same coin. A generator takes a mechanical energy and transfers it into electrical energy. A motor takes electrical energy and transfers it into mechanical energy. Structurally, they're the same thing. So anything we can do with motors, we can convert into generators. And of course, 
this hasn't escaped people. Now there's a number of ways of referring to these. One is hopeless motors, another is axleless motors or axleless generators, and another one is generation at the rim. And you may have heard this before if you're watching the channel, because this is equally something I've been banging on about. Because remember, generation EMF, the voltage, is equal to BLV sine theta, where V is the speed at which something turns. The further from the axle we get, the faster something turns. So voltage will go up in generation if you have generation at the rim. So it's lighter, it's more efficient, it's more power dense, and it's going to generate a higher voltage. All of these things are extremely exciting when it comes to generation. Now, in the previous video, of course, we made this. We took a town child's toy and we made this. This section here is actually a gear. It's the energy input and it happens at the center. But the generation itself happens at the rim. And there is no axle to this. This rests on a thrust bearing without an axle. So in a sense, this is a hubless generator using generation at the rim. Of course, we're going to make another hubless generator that generates at the rim, probably wind-based, and that'll be in the next video. But this concept, generation at the rim, hubless motors, hubless axle-less generators are the latest, greatest development, and extremely exciting. I'm quite pleased because I've been talking about it for 10 years. So it's great to see it coming up in the research. If you want to check that out, go to Google Scholar, type in Generation at the Rim, and have a read at a few research papers, because it really is what's going to move us forward, I believe. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Watch out for some more generators where it's generation at the rim. And please do remember to like and subscribe.